Hello Gemini, this is Deborah, and that means we are into February 2020. Hello guys, lovely to have you with me. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, very interesting energy for you, Gem. I just really wanted to dive straight into it, but um, just wanted to say hello before we start. <laughs> I hope you guys have had an amazing January. I hope you're enjoying the weekly readings. I'm going to keep those going. I've had some lovely comments from you. So thank you so much um, for letting me know that you enjoy them and um, you want me to keep doing those. So I will, obviously. Um, yeah, so Jem, very interesting energy. We're going to get straight into this. All right. Do remember uh, to watch your rising moon Venus, not just your sun sign. OK, um, for instance, my sun sign is uh, Pisces. But my moon sign resonates um, much more than my sun sign does. So do take that into account. All right. OK. Using an angel aura course, which is wonderful for channeling. And yes, my little Robin's joined me again. <laughs> he missed me. So he's come back. Yes. <laughs> all right. So my gems, let's have a look and see what's coming in for you for the month of February. We're going to move into our usual channeled message from Archangel Michael. So if you're sat somewhere nice and relaxed, cup of tea, vodka tonic, whatever does it for you, let's get into your reading. Yeah. Archangel Michael, what do we have, please, for the sign of Gemini? This is for February 2020. Thank you, Michael. Archangel Uriel is behind me. Thank you. James is coming through. The name James? Could be Jamie, girl's name. James or Jamie. Mm. Wow, okay. Um, Michael's showing me the tower. But he's got a big smile on his face. So there's something shocking that's going to happen, Jam. But it's actually going to be something very positive. Maybe a bit uncomfortable. May take you by surprise. <laughs> Okay, all right. Yeah, we're ready for the visual. You ready, guys? Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, so thank you, Michael. All right. So, Michael, thank you for joining us. This is going to be for the reading for my Geminis. What does Gemini need to know, please, Michael, for February 2020? Thank you, Michael. He's taking me straight to a very, very big amusement park. I mean, it could be Disney World, Disneyland, something like that, huge. Uh, bright blue skies, lots of sunshine, animals, you know, all the Disney animals um, wandering around, Disney characters rather, people in costume, kids running around screaming, candy floss, loads of music playing. It's really lively, very exciting. And there's one particular ride that people are queuing up to get on. Interesting. You can't really see what it is. There's um, it what looks like um, a landscape of mountains with a massive hole. Okay, with a train track. I can see a train track and a tunnel hole. A tunnel. So this is a train ride of sorts. Yeah. And there's a father and two small children. I mean probably under 10, something like that. Really excited, cannot wait to get on. Comes to their turn, they pay the fee, get into this carriage and they have pull down, pull down um, protective, like a, like a pull down, I uh, can't remember what it's called now. Um, cage that goes over the front of them, each individual person, three in the front. OK, to prevent people falling out. OK, and it's locked. OK, it's locked. I can see a guy locking it with a key. OK, so. Yeah, and the train starts off. It goes gently through this tunnel. It's very dark. There's a lot of excited screaming and Ooh, what's going to happen. And then suddenly in the darkness, this train takes an absolute vertical drive, vertical dive vertical dive <laughs> and this this father catches his breath and his, his two kids either side absolutely loving it and he's not quite sure 
He's thinking, oh my God, what have I let myself in for? And the train goes around all these twists, all these turns upside down. It's basically a roller coaster inside, inside this cavernous mountain, which is obviously hiding um, this huge um, array of, of train track. <laughs> okay. And after a while, the guy is really enjoying it. He's not quite sure he's really enjoying it. Okay. And Michael's telling me this is a runaway train. This is a runaway, run, runaway train. Can't even say it. Wow. Okay. Never heard of that. You may know what it is. There may be a ride that is called the runaway train or something similar. Um, but this guy has gone from feeling absolutely petrified, actually feeling a bit silly about it because it's for kids, right? Um, to really enjoying it, really enjoying the ride. Unexpected, really enjoying the ride. Okay, thank you, Michael. Okay, guys, thank you for staying with me, for those of you that did. Um, interesting, Jen, are you going on an unexpected ride? It could be a shock. Michael's showing the picture of the tower. Um, it could happen very, very fast, almost before you can catch your breath. You're moving in a different direction. Um, but this is something that you're realising is actually very exciting. A bit daunting, a bit nerve wracking. Don't really know where the train is going to go, right? You don't know whether it's going to chuck you to the left or the right, or it's suddenly going to take a deep dive, but you're getting on the train. You're getting on the train jam and you are quite excited. So we're obviously talking symbolism. Unless, of course, you're going to Disneyland. <laughs> if you are, fantastic, have fun. Um, but yeah, this is for you, Gem. Something you are not expecting. This may be the ride of your life. I'm hearing in my head, Michael's laughing. He knows it's really corny. The ride of your life. Okay, and I've just seen the Ten of Cups fly out of the deck. All right, the ride of your life. Okay, Gem. Michael saying stop. Here we go, guys. Wow, 10 minutes later. I know you're complaining, going, come on. But that was very interesting. Okay. All righty, here we go, guys. I'm going to dip the camera down. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay. Hmm. I don't know whether I should say that, Michael. He's telling me something. He's telling me something. He's actually saying, you're probably wondering what it is. He's actually saying, make sure you're not taken for a ride. Okay. Hmm, Jen. Oh my goodness. And there is a tower. Oh my God. Okay. Hmm. Jen. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God, Jen. Don't panic, but... We have quite a few challenging cards coming through. There is you. Okay. Wow. All right. Mm. Under the deck, Gemini. Taurus. Taurus, the Empress, is also Libra, potentially. We have potentially a woman who is mother, child, energy. This is you also manifesting change. Or maybe your partner gem is manifesting change. Michael's showing me a fog coming down over a cityscape. Make sure that you see things clearly, gem. You may be going on the ride of your life, Jen, but make sure that you're not being taken for a ride. OK. Wow. OK, people, I really don't know where this is going, but it's going to be a big reading. Let's do this. Moving the camera down. OK, guys, here we go. Can you see it? Yeah, camera's playing up. All right. That's pretty good. So we start with you feeling really happy about something, Gem, right? Something that has happened, you're celebrating, all right? This is meeting up with 
friends for drinks. This is you feeling as if you've got everything you want, Gem. And I'm saying it tentatively because I'm feeling that this is potentially your energy. But I'm feeling the energy crossing you is the energy of your partner or the person you're thinking about. Mike was showing me two people, but he's putting a re big red line down the middle, separating the two. So there could be a situation, Gem, where you two are together, but you live kind of separate lives. You could live in different places. Okay. Um, you are living one life and whoever your partner is, is living another life. And I do feel that someone here may be undertaking a very quick transition. That's what I'm hearing, a quick transition. The Seven of Swords in reverse, if this is read correctly, what Michael's saying is this could be, this is your partner, could be, thank you, Michael, is your partner. You might have had issues with your partner in the past, Gem, could have stepped out on you, could have been unfaithful, could have done a bit of lying and stealing and cheating. Michael's actually showing me somebody going through bank records, credit card bills, receipts. Gem, you could be feeling very content in your life, doing your own thing. Okay, maybe two people are together, but they have different jobs. Maybe they work in different places, different cities. Could be long distance connection, relationship. You seem to be feeling as if you've got it all, right? The job is good. You've got your mates. You've got a certain amount of freedom. You go back and see your partner at weekends, whatever this is. Your partner has been a little bit sneaky, Gem could have said to you, if you're married with kids, for instance, oh, you know, the kids need new clothes, the kids need this, they need that. Um, I need a bit of housekeeping money. Um, can you send some money to me? Of course, if they're codependent, possibly. You may have, just without even thinking about it, fielding off cash, off money, and kind of wondering where it's going, Gem. It could be a scenario where you've lent your partner money. I don't know why I'm getting all this money thing coming through. There is something here relating to whilst you've been enjoying yourself, heading out, doing your job, doing normal stuff, meeting friends after work. There's something that your partner's been doing, Jem, that is not on the up and up. Could have been quietly connecting with other people. Okay. In the past with the Four of Swords, there was a situation between you and your partner where you felt a bit drained, a bit tired, a bit weary. It could be that you were struggling working. It could be that money was being spent quite fast. I don't know why this is all coming through, but it is, so bear with me. Um... I think that you were working so hard, having such a busy life. Definitely, I'm feeling career, doing very well in your career. That when you came home, you kind of just crashed out. You kind of just crashed out. Took some time to rest. Without really keeping your eye on the ball as to what your partner was doing. Life was busy and chaotic, right? Hmm. Needing some time to rest in the past, not really looking at my, what might have been, Gem, under your nose. In the immediate past, as far as everyone else is concerned, everything was great, right? You went out with your partner to invites, invited over for, you know, drinks with the neighbours, whatever this is. You both got dressed up and looked smart and headed out, enjoyed time with family, that sort of thing. Everything was great. 
you put on a good show is what Michael is telling me. That's interesting. You put on a good show. Which may indicate, Gem, that maybe one of you, and I have to say, I think it's possibly you, weren't necessarily actually that happy. But life ticked on very, very quickly. And I think you just got on with things. Whereas I think there was a lot of unrest. And actually, I have to say, I'm getting the word resentment from your partner. Now, maybe you were earning three times the amount. They felt a bit jealous of that. Maybe they were a stay-at-home mom for the guys out there. And they felt a bit hemmed in looking after the kids while you were off having drinks with your co-workers or whatever this was. Um, there is a sense of resentment coming through from your partner, Gem. Now, I have to say, this could be a partner you've just left. This could be somebody you're with now. And you, you're nodding at the screen going, yeah, I kind of get that my partner's not happy. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something not quite right. Something not quite right. In your head, Gem, we've got the Six of Cups. Now, this is potentially you thinking at thinking back at happy times, right? If you've got kids, thinking back at the time when your kids were really tiny, running around the garden, okay, as they do, pets, sunshine, flowers, blue skies, really nice. I almost feel as if you're living in the past, Gem, and you still feel as if that's the energy that you're in. Whereas I think your partner emotionally is somewhere else. You're sitting there thinking everything's great, everything's fine, life is good. There's a lot of dark energy and resentment coming from this area. Yeah. Archangel Michael, when do we have the energy coming through in the immediate future, please? Thank you. He's actually saying to me, beginning of April, beginning of April to May. Now, I know this is February, guys, but this could be a conversation, something you find out, something your partner says that makes you think twice about the connection that you've got. And it could be in February, you find something out, and then maybe March, April, things start shifting fast. We got the Queen of Wands in reverse. Gem, I don't feel this is your energy. I don't. I think this is your partner's energy. And I am talking to Gem guys here. Unless, of course, same sex. Take it as it resonates, right, guys? Um, but this is somebody who is angry. Somebody who's upset. Somebody who doesn't feel that life has treated them in the way that they should be treated. I hate to say this, guys. I'm actually hearing the word princess. Princess. So for you gem guys out there who have a codependent partner, um, this is the energy of a woman who feels she deserved a better life. She wanted more money. Um, maybe she felt resentful that you seem to be having a great life, earning lots of money enjoying your job. Maybe she was at home looking after the kids. I think you may find that either your partner's been quietly siphoning off money to buy expensive things that you may not know of because she's hidden them. Wow, I don't know where that's coming from. Um, or this is a woman who feels hard done by somehow. And I have to say, there is going to be fireworks, Gem, because something's going to happen and things are going to escalate or rather disintegrate super fast. I've got to be honest. Now, whatever happens here, I don't know for sure. You may have an inkling of where this is going in your situation. But in the environment, if you're not in the environment, Gem, if you are, I keep feeling that this is definitely a scenario where somebody is living a distance from somebody else. Somebody's in a long distance 
marriage or something like that, long distance connection. And I think there's been a growing sense of mistrust, mistrust between two people, you and your partner. Or your partner, I have to say, Jen, might have been living a double life. Because people in the environment around your partner is seeing this. Now, this is player energy. This is somebody who goes out, parties, meets different people and forgets that potentially they're in a long-term commitment. Maybe whoever this is takes off the wedding ring when they go out. Maybe this person is a bit too flirty after some drinks. Maybe this person feels they, they deserve the adulation because you're not there, Jen, to give you the attention and affection that they want. They feel they deserve it. So if you're not around, they're going to get it from somebody else. But whatever the situation is, Jen, this has escalated to the point now where there is something you find out or there is gossip about your partner. Somebody said something, you know, oh, you know, your wife was wearing a very, very short skirt the other night. Yeah, she was having quite a few drinks. I mean, something like that. You could find a receipt in a coat pocket of a bar that she said she didn't go to. She had no idea that there was a bar in the area or something there was something here you could even find a credit card statement with unexpected expenses it could be hotels it could be expensive jewelry stores it could be something so Jen there's a situation here that is I have to say I've got to be honest is going to go rapidly downhill because unbeknown to you, thinking everything is fine, yeah, we're the same as we've always been, right? We're a really strong couple. Your partner is really unhappy, quite resentful, and has either been spending your money secretively on things that maybe they shouldn't because they don't feel they've got attention, and that is their way of making themselves feel better. Or this is somebody who is quietly flirting with other people and maybe had the odd affair, because you're not around, Jem, and you've realised this. In your fears, the tower, yes. Fearing a shock. Maybe intuitively, Jem, you know something isn't right. You can't pinpoint it. Maybe your partner's been a bit distant. Maybe there's been not a lot of communication. Maybe you've tried to get physical and intimate and they've pushed you away. Whatever this is, you are fearing, you can almost feel intuitively a bubbling up of resentment, anger, upset, which somebody has been hiding with a smile. Oh yes, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Knowing that something's about to blow intuitively. And this is the point where it blows. In your hopes, hoping to hang on to this connection, hoping that you haven't been betrayed, backstabbed, deceived, lied to, stolen from, right? Hoping that it's not the case. Hoping that if this was the case, you can find out the root reason for this. Was it unhappiness? Was it because I wasn't around? Was it because this person didn't feel valued? Was it because they just expected to have a much better life that I could give them? Whatever this is, hoping that you can prevent the painful ending of this. In the outcome gem, is a six of swords. Now, for some sometimes I read this as travel, literally relocation. Sometimes I read this as an affair, somebody quietly, secretively moving towards somebody under cover of darkness. Sometimes this is just moving to calm waters, trying to get balance. I think this is you understanding that potentially somebody's been having an affair, and of course I mean your karmic partner. They've been hiding it. And whilst you have been away from them, maybe working in a different area, a different city, a different state, a different country, they've been living a double life. 
But rather than apologising for that gem, their reaction is anger. Anger. You weren't around. You didn't give me any attention. What do you expect me to do, right? Live like a nun? I mean, I can hear it all coming out. Now, you may be quite shocked at this. But there is something here about your partner feeling a little bit trapped, right? Maybe they're trapped because they're a kids and they're the one that, ones that look, look after the kids while you go and work. For me, this is very much a situation that is very traditional, right? Very old fashioned in many ways. You know, the, the woman stays home, looks after the kids, the guy goes out to work. It could be a situation where, Jem, you had to work in a different country because the salaries were better in that country and then send money home, right? I'm really feeling it's something like that. But this is going to be a shock. And I have to say, this is going to be a massive roller coaster of, holy shit, I thought things were great. And now, wow, this is how you really feel. This is what you've really been up to. Oh my God. Right? And I think this is a wake up call, Gem, that actually the perfect life that you felt was all fine and dandy was really not. The lovers, this is you, Gem, Gemini energy. Accepting, if I can pick the card up, defeat. No longer willing to stand up for this relationship. Why should you? Deciding, I, I, I'm not fighting for this anymore. I mean, this could be you going back to your place at work, leaving it behind, thinking, okay, well, now I've got to make some really big decisions because I had no idea that this was going on under my nose. I had no idea my partner was that unhappy. What am I going to do? Accepting defeat, you, okay? About this partnership. With temperance, there could have been a Sagittarius guy in the mix. Maybe Sagittarius guy that your partner had a fling with several flings with, could have a devil life with. This is somebody who is unable to hold themselves back. They are unable to be patient. Wanting excitement, wanting to be admired, wanting nice things, wanting to be taken out. In a very emotionally unbalanced place. With the King of Wands in reverse, this could be the other person in your karmic partner's life. This could be the man that your female karmic partner has been having a fling with. Could be a Sag, could be Aries, could be Leo. We also have the Knight of Wands, that sort of energy, right next to your karmic partner's energy. Or well, this is you, Jem, particularly if you have fire in your rising moon or Venus sign. This is you not yet wanting to take action, standing well back, trying to settle your emotions, deciding what to do about your wife, your karmic partner, who is coming through as the empress. Maybe the time apart, if you live a distance, Jam, if you work away, or you travel for work, that distance will be much needed and appreciated at this time because you need to have distance from your partner to work out what you're going to do. Very serious reading, Jen. Definitely a roller coaster and a shock. But I'm feeling, given the visual, that Michael's telling me number eight, eight what, Michael? Number eight, eight what? Eight months, okay. He's saying in eight months' time, you're going to realise that actually whatever transpires was meant to happen. And I'm feeling that this is a breakup. This is you two going in different directions. And you may look back, Gem, and think, actually, 
It was painful, it was difficult, but it was the best decision I made to leave it behind. Because unbeknown to me, this was all bubbling up under the surface. And this is the wake up call. This is the shock. This is the tower. This is that deep dive, right? When your stomach goes up to your mouth and you catch your breath and you think, my God, I had no idea. And this is you getting yourself into a calmer place emotionally or even, you know, heading away for a few days to really think about how to manage this. Right, Kipper, let's do this. Michael, what do we have, please, in terms of in terms of advice from you? Okay, these have come out. All right, we have change. Moving, traveling, relocation could be signifying that you live a distance from your partner, long distance relationship, and we have poverty. Now, Jen, this could be as simple as you looking at your bank account thinking, my God, where has my money gone? What has my karmic partner spent it on? She can't come up with the receipts, right? Okay, yeah, we have family room. So we have a situation where there's a family that could actually be struggling Or I have to say, you could be, Gem, in a situation where you have to post money back to family who live in a poorer area. I've got to be honest. And with distant horizons, you are working in a more affluent area. Yeah. Underneath that is marriage. Yeah, this is your marriage partner. Who is potent potentially codependent. Now, what is interesting, we have main female. But right under that, Gem... We have false person. And I'm feeling this is the person that your partner's turned into. Out of rejection, feeling rejected because you're not there. Feeling she deserved a better life. Feeling she's stuck there with the kids. Feeling you're heading off and having a great life in a more affluent city, a different place while she's where she is. I'm just feeling resentment. Wow, this is really interesting. We've got imprisonment. Maybe your karmic partner felt imprisoned in a life that she didn't want to lead. Community. She may be in a community of people who know what's been going on and you don't because you're not there half the time, Jam. Yeah, trying to see what's underneath this. Bad health. So... There could be somebody here who's constantly complaining, constantly crying, somebody who's been very depressed, not feeling well, but I think this is depression. But I also feel that there's a fluctuation here. One minute, you know, getting dressed up, going out, spending money to make themselves feel better, and the next minute feeling depressed and guilty and almost playing the victim, Gem. Yeah. Now, what is interesting underneath that, we've got thief and we've got thoughts. Now, you may be wondering, is my karmic partner siphoning off cash? I'm not saying that your karmic partner is a thief. That's a very serious thing to say. So I've got to be very careful here. But there could be an insinuation of just not telling the truth about purchasing things to make them feel better. Your partner's purchased things to make her feel better. Right, because you're not there, overspending, running up credit card bills, and you're wondering, that's where all my money's gone. And not knowing that there's a huge underlying issue of resentment, unhappiness, depression. And having to deal with this, and it's all going to come to light, Jam, in the next few months. So brace yourself, okay? It is going to be a roller coaster. But in a way, if this is resonating, this is what you're going through. Michael's telling me in eight months time, eight months is coming through very strongly. In eight months time, you will know which direction to move into.
Wow, now Michael's actually telling me nine months and he's showing me a cradle, my God. So it could even be a situation where your karmic partner stepped out on you, got pregnant by another man, and you come home and she says, oh, you know, I'm pregnant. And you think, hang on. And you're looking at the diary thinking, well, I wasn't around at the time that you said you conceived. So how is that possible? Jen, there could even be that situation. And you're beginning to piece things together. Okay. Wow. All right, Jemmy, I'm going to leave it there. Wow. Serious reading. I hope it's helped one of you maybe out there who's going through this and you may be there going, oh, my goodness, that is totally my story. If it was, you can, of course, reach out for a private reading. You know how to do that, guys. Um, description box below. Join me on Instagram and I should be back in a week's time for your weekly reading. And I should, of course, um, be looking forward to doing another main reading for you in March. The weekly readings um, how are now, um, because I'm doing the weekly readings, I'm not now doing the mid-month readings because it's just impossible to do so many for you. All right. Um, but I should be back in March for your main reading, but I will see you in the weeklies. Take care now. Bye.